Oh boy, Bandai and Tosei. So you know this one's gonna be good. And Akuma Kun does live up to the high standards we've come to expect from the pairing. It might even be their best game. A bar so low you could trip over it. Akuma Kun has a little bit of a confusing history. There's actually multiple comic series that use a lot of the same concepts, but are radically different in story. Akuma Kun is about a morose little boy in a striped shirt who straddles the line between the world of demons and humans. And if that sounds incredibly familiar, it's because it's by the same person who created Gigage no Kitaro. Akuma Kun Makai no Wana is based on the Millennium Kingdom series. That Akuma Kun is Shingo Umoregi, a boy obsessed with the occult who wants to use the power of demons to improve the world. Dr. Faust likes this idea, so he helps Akuma Kun learn how to summon demons. And as the messiah for the new millennium, Akuma Kun has to gather 12 apostles. Those apostles are the big feature of this game. When you get into combat, Akuma Kun's on his own. What you'll usually want to do is summon some assistance. You have a certain amount of control power, or CP, and each apostle costs a bit of that CP. Once summoned, the apostle will act on their own for their first turn, and then they'll either continue to act on their own, or you can give them specific orders. The apostles have their own hit points, as well as their own control points, and those control points are spent by using big abilities. They also have a mood that will affect how they behave in battle. To go over the six apostles that you start with, there's Yuko the Snow Maiden, Pixie, who is solely a support character, Yakume, who can drain life and use holy effects, the big and prickly Kaju, who can defend other characters and attacks physically, the bird woman Torio Tome, who starts out with some very strong wind attacks, and Komori Neko, who has dark attacks and tends to steal a lot of money from the enemy. As the game starts out, you're in Hell. Hell's a really important location, since that's where you go to save. You visit Dr. Faust to get a password. The towns are side-scrolling areas, and you press up or down to interact with objects. Besides the doctor, in Hell you can find a magic shop. That's where you buy the runes that are needed to cast spells. Every spell requires six runes, and casting the spell consumes them. Spells cost you a hundred gold or more to cast, since every time you do it, you have to go and buy more runes. You exit towns by walking all the way to the left or right, and when you exit Hell, you wind up in Tokyo. You have to walk into the telephone pillar to return to Hell. Akuma-kun's house is next door, and you can recover your health and CP there for free. And you're going to need to do that a lot, because you are confined to a pretty small area until you defeat the boss in Hell. There are two doors at the far right-hand side of Hell. The first one contains some basic enemies to fight, and the second one contains Kerberos. You have to build up some strength before you have any chance of taking him on. And leveling is slow. It took me about 45 minutes to earn two levels and then go fight Kerberos. Your apostles just aren't strong enough to really take on the enemies at first, and so what you'll want to do at level 1 and 2 is summon all of them for the fight, let them all do their thing, then go back to Akumakun's house to heal, then return to this room. It takes 20 experience points to get to level 2, and you get one experience point for every enemy you defeat here. Combat takes a long time to play out, too. It doesn't help that Akumakun's physical attacks can't really affect enemies until he's around level 4. You'll be grinding a very long time to make any progress here. But once you finally defeat Kerberos, Dr. Faust opens a tunnel between Japan and Korea, and you have access to the rest of the world. From then on, you're looking for the other six apostles, hunting for items that will help you recruit them, and asking around to learn parts of spells. Exploring the overworld isn't very great, since you get stuck on terrain really easily. But at least this isn't a game where you get attacked every other step. If you want to make the game easier, Akuma-kun had one of the least secure password systems you'd find on the Famicom. The last character in the password is a checksum, and it's always a digit 0 to 9. As a result, people just tried anything and then cycled the number at the end. If you want to be max level and skip to the end of the game, enter a password that's all twos except for the final digit, which is a nine. The format of Family Daily doesn't let me dig too deeply into RPGs. I've got to make an episode a day and move on. 
So I'm going to concede that Akuma-kun might get better once you've broken out of Japan. But at that point, you still have to go all the way back to Tokyo to save. There's a spell to teleport you back there, but obviously that costs you quite a bit of money. The slow grind and progression is what was really turning me off on Akuma-kun. But I really like the idea of summoning an enormous party. Once you have everybody, you've got your pick of 12 characters to bring out. And so you'll be picking people based on what your current needs are. That's a pretty fun concept. Except early on, you have to just summon everybody and then go heal. So I couldn't really take advantage of it. Akuma-kun's creative, but it's just so slow. And I really don't see how anyone who doesn't have an affection for these characters could possibly get into it.